I don't have time for this. Neither do I. A level four naughty lister? Oh, is that funny to me? What he says. What's up guys, today I got my hands on the Zenovo Z1. So this is another affordable LED home cinema projector priced under 200. And it has some decent specifications and it's running full Android version 12. Now, first of all, inside the box, you will find a user manual. We've got a European power cable, HDMI cable, a small screw which connects to the bottom of the projector and that will give you some elevation. And this comes with a handy remote control. This is an infrared remote control and it's powered by two AAA batteries. And last, but certainly not least, the projector itself. Now the projector has a rather smart design. We've got a lens on the front and there is no lens cover to cover it. We've got sensors here for autofocus and auto keystone correction. Up on top we have power button and some touch controls for navigation. On the side we have nothing, just some ventilation at the bottom. And on the back we have power socket, infrared for the remote control. We've got two speaker grills. We've got a headphone jack, USB 2, USB 3. We've got an HDMI input so you can go ahead and connect your favorite game console, Android TV box, and so on and so forth. And this also has, surprisingly enough, an ethernet port. If we keep going, nothing on this side, just more vents. And that brings us back to the front. And here is a quick look at the bottom of the projector. So over here you can see a thread for that screw. And that screw is simply for elevation. And in the center we've got another quarter inch thread and that is for a tripod or a universal mount. All right, so let's just quickly run through the specs. So this is an LED video projector. Lamp life is 100,000 hours. Brightness is 800 ANSI lumens. Contrast ratio 20,000 to one. This has a native full HD resolution. That's 1920 by 1080. This does apparently support 4K decoding, which we will be testing later on. This projector is powered by the Cortex A55, two gigahertz, and we have the Mali G52 integrated graphics. It's running full Android 12, and you've got built-in Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 4.2, and a 100 megabyte LAN. The projector features autofocus and auto keystone correction, and there are two 8 watt stereo speakers built in. And the maximum optimal projection size is 120 inches. Okay, so the projector is all set up and ready to go. And the first thing I like to do is test out that fan noise. So standing right next to the projector, you can expect a fan noise of around 47 decibels. And if I move back one meter, the fan noise drops down to around 40 decibels. Now the projector is situated three meters away from the wall in front of us, and we're projecting just over 120 inches. So this is the home screen. It is based on Android 12. It's got their own custom skin on top, and it gives you shortcuts at the top for Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video, YouTube, HBO Max. Then you have an app store, you've got my apps, and then you've got projector settings, under which you've got keystone adjustment and wallpapers. Okay, so quick look at all the apps available on this box as standard. So these are all your apps. You've got the Google Play Store, you've got a third party Play Store, File Manager, Prime Video, YouTube, Netflix, Disney, Miracast, and iOS Cast. So these are all the apps installed as standard. So the first thing we're gonna test is USB flash drives. So now we're gonna play some 4K video samples from a USB drive, and we're gonna start off with the usual high bitrate jellyfish demo, and we're gonna see if this can play back on this projector. Okay, so you can see it's gone all fuzzy at the top. It's trying to play back, but it can't. So I just paused it and I press play again. Yeah, it's not happening. High bitrate jellyfish demo is not happening on this projector. So the next few clips we're testing is 4K 60 with HDR. Let's see if it works. So as you guys can see, it's not working. It's not playing back 4K 60. Um, I think the problem might be that this projector does not support HDR. Okay, the second clip is an HDR 10 file. Audio is working, but video is not working. So 4K 60 not happening. 
Now we're going to test out 4K30 and see if it can render. Okay, 4K30 is working. All right, so that's good news. All right, so 4K30 appears to work fine. I'll try another 4K30 file. And you can see it's not working. So unfortunately, 4K videos from a USB drive is generally not working. All right, we're gonna test out a 1080p video clip now. You got bus duty today. Today I can't, because I, uh, you know, I uh, volunteered down at the youth center. So as you guys just saw, 1080p video files working fine. So you can certainly play your 1080p movie collection from this projector directly from USB drive. But unfortunately, 4K playback is not happening. All right, so next up, we're gonna stream some videos on YouTube. So starting off with the usual Costa Rica demo. So YouTube supports 1080p 60 max, and unfortunately, HDR is not available. So let's see how it plays back. Paused it on the lizard as I usually do. You guys can see the stats for yourselves. We're gonna have a quick close up. You can see no pixelation up close. Picture quality in fact is very nice. The colors and contrasts already look nice to me. Unfortunately, I have not found a way to alter the colors and contrast. So if you wanna customize that, if you wanna use a preset or anything like that, it's not available on this projector. I haven't found a way to do it and I have tried. But what I'm seeing so far is actually not bad. So um, pretty decent projection quality, sharp colors, contrast looks great, very nice bright image. Now what I wanna do is turn the light on and show you what projection quality looks like in the daytime. So even with the light on, you can still see everything on that screen. Uh, it's not as prominent, it doesn't look as nice, but it is still visible. So I'm gonna play a few more seconds of this just to show you what daytime projection is like. So that was a taste of daytime projection. Now, if you really want to enjoy your projector, you want to switch that light off and you can see the difference for yourself. All right, so let's go ahead and play a few more trailers and see what this thing can do. You know the butcher, the freaking nut job that goes around chopping people up? And the feds heard that he's gonna be here today. Yeah. Crew's been compromised. But you wanna be trained now. You can dirt face me. Target there. How's it look? Good. Maybe I can bring my son back up here. I'm running for catalytic converters. They need platinum. Come again. Outside. I do not take orders from anyone. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. Level four. Are you telling me this clown is a level four naughty lister? A level four naughty lister? Oh, so for me too. Okay, so that was a whole bunch of trailers on YouTube. Now we're going to quickly open up the Netflix app. Now, unfortunately, every time I open Netflix, I was presented with this message. It says update Google Play services or Netflix will not run. And every time you try an update, it takes you to the Play Store and it says Google Play services is not compatible with your device anymore. So unfortunately, the pre-installed Netflix does not work. Now, the solution to this is to just attach your own Android TV box or Fire TV stick. Then all the apps will work as normal and you can potentially stream full HD quality across the board if you do attach your own TV box. All right, so now it's time to test out screen mirroring and we're gonna start off with iOS cast. So that's screen mirroring for your iPhones. So grab my iPhone, tap on screen mirroring and you can see there the projector name has come up, PR80, exactly what's written at the bottom right hand corner. Tap on it 
and any second now, my iPhone screen will be mirrored. And voila. So iPhone screen mirrored and you can see it's working absolutely fine with minimal lag. And now we're going to test out screen mirroring for Android devices. Tap on screencast and again you can see the projector name has come up. And any second now my Android screen will be mirrored. So it took a few moments to connect. But once connected you can see screen mirroring working absolutely fine with no issues. So happy to say screen mirroring working absolutely fine on both Android and iOS devices. All right, so now it's time to switch to HDMI and I've just connected up my PlayStation 5. Okay, so if we check out the current video output signal, first of all, well, you can see the resolution is set at 1080p at 60 hertz. It says 4K video at 60 hertz isn't supported. So limited to 1080p, which we were expecting. And if we just try to switch on HDR, you will see the message that this TV does not support HDR. PlayStation 5 connected, 1080p60 is the maximum resolution supported and there is no HDR. So let's go ahead and play a few games and see how it plays. let's quickly check out the main system settings. So we've got Wi-Fi and this does support five gigahertz Wi-Fi. You've got Bluetooth projection settings. We've got fire automatic focusing, um, disposal autofocus. Then you've got autofocus. You just press it once and it will just activate the autofocus. You've got manual focusing. You've got scaling. So you can basically zoom the image. So if the image was overlapping the ceiling or the sides, you can scale it right down to less than 50%. And that just helps the projector image fit any sized wall, screen or room. Now, when I do automatic, you can see it overlaps the door on the left and it overlaps my printer on the right. So I actually have to manually adjust this. The other option is to shrink the image down. Otherwise, you can see the image is probably 150 inches overlapping both sides of the ceiling. Yeah, I think that's all right. That's my image corrected. So that was basically your projector settings. I haven't found any settings that where you can actually fine tune the color, the contrast, the brightness, etc. None of those settings uh, are available on this projector. Languages, I'll quickly show you what languages are available. You've got quite a few. I'm just going to skim through them and you can read for yourself which languages are available. So it's quite a few. And that is the last one right at the bottom. Input methods, you can choose different Android keyboards. Um, you've got the date, local date, time. System, you can do system upgrades or reset. And I did test it for an online update and it says it's the latest version already. There. 
other settings, you've got some options, boot source option, so it can automatically boot up an HDMI source, power on option, standby, direct, scheduled shutdown, and screen saver wait time. And then finally, we have about, and I do want to show you, it says model number Z1, and then it says Android 12, memory information, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, and that is pretty much all the... So there you have it, guys. That was the Zenovo Z1. And here are my thoughts. So you've just seen what this projector can do, and it's pretty decent for £168. It's designed well, bright, clear projection quality, great sound quality from the internal speakers. It's running Android 12, supports screen mirroring for both Android and iOS. Remote control is responsive, and you have the Play Store and a third-party app store pre-installed. But let's also discuss the caveats. Netflix does not work out of the box. Fan noise is pretty loud at 47 decibels. You cannot play 4K videos from USB drive. No HDR is supported. And there were no customization options for brightness, color, contrast, etc. And based on all those caveats, let's see how this projector ranks against the other projectors of this year. So this is my top projector chart of 2024, letting you compare these specs, features, and prices with all the others. And as you guys can see, I have ranked this projector at position 13 on this chart, and I've also given this projector an overall rating of 3.6 out of 5. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure, and of course completely free of charge. So bottom line, whilst the projection quality, brightness and sound quality is very, very nice, you still do have to factor in those caveats that I've mentioned to decide whether this is the one for you. On a positive note, the price certainly is quite attractive for what you're getting. Now, if you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.